It went down in Grind City. That is the Stifle Tower. Two-time defensive player of the year. Offensively effective. 17 points on the night. Eight rebounds as the Utah Jazz get the victory in game four and go up three games to one with an opportunity to close things out when they go home to Utah. And Jazz Nation is happy about this one. I can smell the second round. Oh, they're so cute at that age. <laughs> Let's go! With that being said, NBA fans, what's good? You are now rocking with the best. Ro Parrish here in Studio B. It is Playoff Central Live. I have Steve Smith, NBA champion and all-star. I have the Hall of Famer and two-time champion Isaiah Thomas here with us to break down Game 3. Grizzlies take the L to the Utah Jazz. Zeke, starting with you, we saw late in the game that Utah Jazz team started making a run, Conley making big plays, the strip and going down and making the three. Your immediate thoughts from seeing this game? Uh, Conley coming home and, and knowing when to, you know, insert the dagger, so to speak. Um, you know, sometimes you can, you can play a game and you just have to wait for the right moments to make your mark and, and to make the biggest plays in the game. And I thought Conley did that, you know, knocking down the three, then coming back and getting a the steal, then penetrating the lane and getting the assist. You know, th those three b plays, at, you know, during that period of time, you know, those were backbreaker plays in terms of breaking the momentum, breaking the spirit of the of the Grizzlies. And I and I thought Conley was was perfect in, in inserting himself into the offensive thrust of the game during that moment in time. Didn't have the biggest scoring night, only 11 points in comparison with the 20 point games that he's had previously in this series. But when you look at someone like Donovan Mitchell right now, who has the highest scoring average in Utah Jazz playoff history, and we know they've had some great players in the Utah Jazz's franchise. Your thoughts on Donovan Mitchell and how he was able to lead this team to a victory. What I love about him, Ro, is he's a rim seeker. He's always trying to get downhill. And I think it helps because when you have that much space and shooter, he creates a lane, be able to have an offensive rebounding lane for Rudy Gobert. But also, he obviously attracts two. And when he attracts two, sometimes he can go through two, split two, but then also he finds his teammates. I think for him is, didn't shoot it great, but this is the playoffs. you got to hunt shots if that's your job and also have a balance of being able to get your teammates involved. But the best thing for me today was how he got himself to that free throw line. I think it was 13 free throw attempts. It just settled to Utah Jazz. They looked like a totally different team with him. The reason why he's that downhill guy that can attract two off the dribble, off the bounce, and as a guard with that size, him absorbing contact, playing through contact, really helps the Utah Jazz. 30 points in Smitty, this. Smitty, I, 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 I just have to say this, and you and I, you know, we, we got love for Detroit, and I just look at this game tonight and I say Donovan Mitchell, and then I look at Phoenix with Devin Booker, and this is totally off subject, but the Pistons passed on both of them. Now, now back to tonight, Smitty. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That, that just came out, man. It was, it just, <laughs> and I just got Smitty that. has left the <laughs> building. Just like Smitty, that. I'm sorry. Smitty is out of here. Come just on, like Detroit. That. Come on back. Detroit basketball. It just, it just came out. Hey, Can one we, thing that I love. We're going to commercial. No, no, I, had to gather, I had to gather myself. Hey, hey, he had to gain his composure. One thing that I love about <laughs> Zeke. As he always says, he'll let it be known, and he let it be known right there. And, you know, and the reason why is not only their talent, the way they approach the game, they fit Detroit basketball. That's the difference. You can have the talent. You say, oh, I wouldn't want that talent, but they fit Detroit basketball. And Zeke said, he just hurt my heart. Now they passed on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It just, it just, it just came out. I'm, I, I apologize to the audience. <laughs> You know, Utah Donovan was great tonight, and you know he did everything that that you need to do to win a basketball game. And uh, you know he he was perfect. And you know, and also you know hats off to Coach Snyder too, who's done an excellent job of you know regrouping his team after such a heartbreaking uh, performance in in the bubble. You know, losing that three one lead, then coming back this year, getting their team ready, uh, Conley adjusting to his new role. Uh, Coach Snyder's done a great job in Utah also. And Zeke, to add, Jordan Clarkson's 24 points, but another guy, hard hat guy, Royce O'Neal, Zeke. I don't know if we ever mm. get a chance mm -hmm. to talk about him a lot. He's just there. It, he's there. I'm going to hit a timely three. I'm not the first, second, third, fourth option offensively. But he's always on that floor, Zeke, and it's something he's doing 
positive defending, rebounding, scrapping for the Utah Jazz. Yeah, and, and they believe, Smitty. I mean, you can, you can look at Utah, and, you know, with Mitchell and Conley, they have two, two ball penetrators that can, that can get downhill. Uh, they're unselfish with, with the basketball. They set up their three-point game. And then defensively, they're, they're very solid on the defensive side of the ball. So, again, you know, Coach Snyder, you know, coming from, you know, Coach K and that, and that, that, that background on defense and offense and shooting a three-point uh, shot and, you know, playing free, you know, the way they came into the game tonight, you know, even though it was a closeout game and you can see at the end of the game, these last three to five minutes, their style of play is consistent. They're still shooting the long ball. They're still penetrating. They're still making good plays. They do not change their style at the end of the game. And Greg Anthony made an excellent point. He said the last five minutes of the game was almost a replica of the mm -hmm. last five minutes of the last game. That's because that's their style, and they're cons consistent, and they play with it. They definitely do play consistent. That's why they've been the number one team virtually all season in NBA, the Utah Jazz. We got plenty coming your way on Jazz go up 3-1 the first time they've won road playoff games consecutively since 2017. Quinn Snyder, the head coach. John Morant, and then he came back down and hit a three. He'd been quiet for most of the game up until that point, I think. How important are, is he in especially those moments where he's able to shift the game no matter how active he's been? Yeah, he, he's kind of a sneaky quiet. Um, he, he whispers, but you can hear him. And I think he impacts the game so many ways, um, you know, and in those instances, obviously, th those are making big plays. Uh, his presence on the court is so settling. And I think, you know, taking a defensive challenge and, you know, also pushing the ball up the court, I thought in the third quarter, uh, we really moved the ball. It's the best we've run in a while. And, you know, Mike's play is a big part of that. You know, it got it got everybody run, and I'll give our bigs credit too because they really ran to the rim and created space. But as you said, you know, Mike's capable of making big plays on both ends, and those two plays consecutively certainly had a, a big impact on the momentum of the game. Eric Walden, so like to read. Quinn, there's been a lot said about the Grizzlies' resiliency this series, you know, their ability to, to come back after you guys served ahead. But um, you guys have demonstrated your own resiliency in, in kind of handling their comebacks. What's been kind of the key to maintaining your composure and kind of being able to pull these games out after, you know, Memphis makes them close? Well, I think it's something we've talked about, you know, all year long, just the ability to get to the next play. And, you know, I, I think when your whole team is focused on that, you know, there's always going to be moments where guys drift for whatever reason. Um, it happens to all of us. And I think when there's a collective mindset and an understanding that you have to get to the next play together, um, you know, that's that's what you see. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm focused on our guys. I, I think we've been a resilient team, you know, all year long as well. And I think our biggest challenge and the one we've talked about, you know, most recently, continuously, but even more recently, is just to be consistently competitive. And our execution, I think, is reflective of that, you know, on both ends of the floor. Those are things that, you know, we don't think of in terms of, usually think of it that in terms of execution, you know, on the offensive end. Um, but for instance, you know, the, the rebounds that Roy Scott in traffic, I thought were, you know, were a huge part of the game. Kristen Kenny, Jazz TV. Speaking of Royce O'Neal, he's shown great balance in this series on both ends of the floor. What have you seen from him? Well, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Royce. And I think he's, you know, he's finding a balance offensively between, you know, being aggressive and taking a shot when he's open, um, being a playmaker, moving the ball, playing pick and roll where he's rolling. You know, he's gotten more comfortable in those situations. And he's just such a competitor and he's a smart player. So I think when you have that mindset that you want to impact the game, 
you know, any way you can, um, you know, you, you usually find ways to do it. And, and that's what we see from him consistently. Tony Jones, The Athletic. Coach, it feels like, I mean, Jai's still been, you know, really dynamic and he was really dynamic tonight, but it feels like you guys are finding some level of comfort in terms of defending him, particularly in, in uh, possessions that matter. Is is that something that you're seeing or you still uh, think that, you know, the defense in terms of keeping him from touching the paint needs to get better? Well, you know, it's hard. If you've watched him play all year, Tony, as you have, it's it's hard to keep him out of the paint, you know, and I think you can um, – there's a lot of things you can do to try to do that. Um, I thought, you know, one of the biggest things, you know, when he had that really big game when he had 47 is we put him on the line 20 times. And, you know, I think collectively, you know, we've, we've been more connected in those situations. You know, if he's going to play one-on-one -on -one against somebody from the top of the floor – you know, I don't think there's anyone in the league that can stand in front of him. So, um, you know, we all have to be conscious of, of what he's doing on the floor. And, you know, and then, you know, he also has the ability to create. So, you know, as I've said, you're, you're going to give up something. Um, and you just, you know, literally try to do your best to make, to make it hard, to make a shot contested. Uh, there are certain situations where it's easier to do that. And you try to create those. Um, but also with the understanding that, you know, if he does make a play, you know, you've got to get to the next play because he's going to make some and he made some tonight and, you know, he'll make some again the next game. David James, KUTV. Quinn, because you were up 3-1 a year ago, do you have a lot of confidence in the guy's ability to maintain focus and uh, take this all the way through the finish line? Yeah, you know, last year is last year, just like the regular season is the regular season. You know, I think there's things that, you know, that you take from from the past that, that you learn from and there's experience, um, you know, for our group that's been going on for a while. You know, this was a team that you know, was questioned on every level, you know, last May. And, you know, those types of moments and that type of adversity, if handled properly, you learn from it and you're better. Um, and, and honestly, you know, we've tried to take, you know, it, it's the old cliche, you know, take one game at a time, but understanding also that, that every game is different. I, I think that's really true without the course of, within the course of a singular game. And I thought we were more consistent tonight. Um, you know, teams are going to make runs, especially teams that are as good as Memphis. And really it's how you respond to them. So um, we just want to be ready to play the next game, you know, and, let the rest take care of itself. I think if we compete and execute, that's that's what we want to do. Ben Anderson, KSLSports.com. I know he's kind of done it all year. That's why he won the award. But Jordan Clarkson's third quarter was seemed really important. What does that do for your team in a playoff game like this on the road? Well, I can't remember who asked me. I think it was a number of people if I was worried about Jordan shooting because he hadn't shot it great you know, of late. Um, but you don't have to look too far back to see games like you saw tonight. And he has the ability to come in the game and change the game. And um, there's times when, you know, he can get himself in a little bit of trouble, um, but he can also get out of trouble. And I thought tonight um, something as simple as spacing, you know, and making reads. And we, we passed the ball better tonight. And that, that really helps Jordan where he's not, responsible for creating everything on his own where you know he's on the back of some back end of some of those possessions and and get some clean looks and that happened tonight and one of the things about jordan that makes him really unique first of all you know you get the sense that you know when he misses you know he keeps shooting um so to that extent you know he, he's mentally tough enough to take the next shot but He's also someone that, that cares so deeply um, about, you know, about playing well and about helping the team. So, you know, when he does have a stretch where he's missing a couple in a row, um, you know, I don't think he presses, but he's very aware of it. And usually, you know, at times you just need to remember to remind him 
that that's who he is and that's who we need him to be. Last question, Nick Friedel, ESPN. Quinn, I wanted to follow up on what you mentioned about last season and experience. Obviously, every year is different, but do you think because of what the group went through last year in the, the postseason bubble, they're more confident now going into a similar situation uh, in, in a similar setting? Yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm sure it's something that the guys have discussed at various times. You know, I think we're looking at it more generally, you know, as opposed to pointing um, to a specific series or a specific time. You know, that, that situation in the bubble was a really unique one. And that's certainly not to discount the fact that, you know, we were in a position that, that we want to be in again. Um, but, but this is a different year. And this is a different team. You know, we've got Boyan back. Um, you know, Derek is here this year. So, you know, there's some things about our group right now. And I think there's a maturity. You know, when you go through, we, we've, we've been through a lot. And I think, I think when that happens, you know, all of us, whether it's personally or, or certainly with the team, you know, you pull each other along. And I think that's the growth process that's taking place with our team. And so I, I don't know if we're, we're thinking about kind of these similarities between situations as much as we are focusing on, you know, competing and executing. Those are the two things that we say over and over and over again. Let's compete and let's execute and let's compete collectively. And I think if that's where our focus is, you know, we'll be in a good place uh, to the extent that that's something that you can build on from last year. You know, that's good, too. All right. That's all for tonight. Thank you, Coach. We go to Taylor Jenkins, the head coach for the Grizzlies. Taylor, what did you think were the decisive factors that swung this game in, in, in Utah's favor? Uh they made more plays than we did. Um, I thought we got great looks throughout stretches of the game, and every time we missed, you know, a wide open three or wide open layup, it seemed like they just scored right away on the other end. So, give them a lot of credit. That's why they're the best team in the NBA. I've said it all along. You know, we we don't take advantage of an opportunity. You know, they're going to make you pay. So, you know, a couple of breakdowns here and there throughout the game, but so proud of our guys' fight. Uh, unbelievable game plan, discipline. Um, you know, they they just made more plays than us. Uh, we were right there. Another game right there in the fourth quarter. Um, um, great fight, and uh, just came up a little short. Evan Barnes. Taylor, you got the fight you wanted in the first quarter, but that third quarter, which you guys have dominated, that was kind of where the Jazz kind of took over. Is it, at this point, is it just kind of a miss, a frustrating to just kind of see how many ways this team can just counter you guys now? I mean, they've done it the entire season. It's nothing to be frustrated about when we're given a great fight uh, against the best team in the NBA, and they just have a response for everything. You know, we're giving it everything we got. We're competing at the highest level. Um, we're trying to play our best basketball, and they're trying to play their best basketball too. So I wouldn't say it's frustration. It's actually encouraging that, you know, with the group that we've had, we have against the group that they have, and we're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, it's phenomenal to watch. Uh, you obviously wish that it would swing, um, but our efforts there, our discipline was there tonight. Um, the looks that we got, we take. Uh, we'll watch the film. Obviously, you're going to want some things to be a little bit different uh, in terms of execution, or um, you know, you're never going to play a perfect game. You got to play a perfect game against this team, and we are so close. Two games in a row comes down to the fourth quarter, last couple of minutes. Um, I would not say I'm frustrated. I'm so encouraged. All we got to focus on is going and winning one game. We've been great on the road. We've won there before. Um, it's going to be their hardest game of the year to win uh, for them, and our focus is going to go out there and keep competing and fighting and give it our best shot and play our best basketball. Sean Coleman. Coach Grayson in game three, DeAnthony tonight, the bench source from the shooting has really stepped up. It seems like in game five it's combining it from multiple sources, but that has to be a huge encouragement getting the three-point shooting going from the bench. Yeah, I mean, we're getting more attempts. Uh, you know, the ball's moving a little bit better. Um, hopefully we're moving the ball even better in the next game, and, you know, we're getting the same looks and we're knocking them down. Our bench was huge tonight. J.J. had tons of great looks. Jai had great looks. Uh, the energy in the ball is moving better. Uh, we just got to keep taking up a notch uh, to break through and get another victory here. So uh, bench was, you know, huge last two games, different guys stepping up. Um, we're going to need that effort again to, uh, Wednesday night. I think we lost Avery. Brandon Abraham, go ahead. Hey, Taylor, uh, changed the rotation up a little bit tonight, cutting it down to nine, um, you know, different players in different spots. Uh, 
Is that something that's just kind of changing on the fly as the games go on uh, and heading into an elimination game on Wednesday? I mean, it's something that we planned out and discussed as a staff after game three and, you know, just trying to get, uh, you know, more shooting out there. Uh, you know, spacers, obviously, the play small, um, you know, trying to create opportunities for our guys as much as possible, advantages on the offensive end if we can. And, you know, we got confidence in these guys defensively. You know, we're, we're making it tough. Uh, I know they scored 120, but we're making it as tough as possible on these guys, uh, trying not to give them free looks. But uh, definitely in, you know, the conversation with our group, and we'll kind of figure out after watching the film what's best for us going into game five. Clayton Collier. Hey coach, just uh, the performance of Jaron, I know you touched on it earlier, but, you know, for a guy that's coming back, you know, trying to find his, his full, you know, pre-injury groove to have a performance like this tonight, what does that do for his confidence for his young for a young guy and also his development and getting back to that point? No, it's great development. It's great confidence boosting. I said it before the game, uh, you know, to somebody like his, his aggressiveness on both ends of the floor has been phenomenal the last two games. Um, you know, see him knock down some shots tonight and have that confidence shooting from the three-point line, but his drive and finishing game with physicality, defensively, some great contests, you know, uh, rebounding as well. Um, these are huge steps for him. And I know he's still trying to find his way back and, you know, get him back to his best shape and all that stuff. But he's doing everything in his powers to give us everything he's got. And uh, just really proud of his effort. I know he's going to even be better in game five. Last question. We'll go to Evan. Taylor, if you could just expand a little bit. When you talk about being encouraged by this team at this point, just being, again, a young group, maybe playing some people saying ahead of schedule, but for you seeing this group improve and, and maybe applying the lessons you guys have learned, how proud is it making knowing that you guys are fighting with this jazz team. Uh, you must have been in the locker room. That's exactly what I said to the team afterwards. I said, heads up, so proud of the fight. Uh, we're right there. We're literally going toe to toe against the best team in the NBA. We're doing a lot of things great, you know, compared to the previous game. We're doing more. Uh, we got to find ways to do more. You know, our mentality as we've done all season long is continue to fight, uh, be the most competitive team, most together team. Uh, and I've got the most faith in this group when we go out and get on a plane tomorrow. Uh, we'll be ready for game five. We're going to play our best basketball of the season. These guys do it all season long. And these moments right here, first for so many of these guys to stay together, stay the course, stay the fight. Um, it's huge. It's huge for our growth. It's huge for our future, but you know the job's not done yet. We still got a lot more work to do. A series isn't over. We just got to focus on winning one game and bringing basketball back here to Memphis. Thank you, Coach. Great. Thanks, everybody. A seven-point win in Game Three. There is Rudy, seventeen and eight, and maybe he's about to join the steam room with Chuck and Ernie. Let's take a listen. Uh, Coach Snyder, tell you at the halftime to explain your your second half compared with the, with your first one. Um. You know, we weren't really satisfied with the way we were playing in the first half. Even though we had five points, we really felt like we could, you know, do a lot of things better offensively and defensively. So, you know, just uh, keep our head, you know, uh, keep moving the ball and uh, and defensively, you know, get get back and communicate with each other. It sounds pretty simple, but, you know, when we stop doing that, uh, you know, they, they usually make a run. So we, we really have to had to clean that up, and I think we I thought we did a, a much better job in the second half. Eric Walden, Salt Lake Tribune. Rudy, what was kind of the key for you uh, personally? Obviously, you had just one point two rebounds at the half, and then you're getting three buckets within the first couple of minutes of the third quarter. Uh, were was Quinn kind of designing stuff to get you a little more engaged on that end? No, really. I mean, I, I think, you know, uh, the main thing for me is uh, when, when we move the ball and we play the way we're supposed to play, when we attack the basket, uh, you know, I know guys going to find me or I'm going to get offensive rebounds. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much our best offense. You know, guys, the defense going to collapse and either they're going to help off me and I'm going to get a dunk or a rebound or they're going to help off the shooter and we're going to get a three. So that's really the way we, we're we trying to play. And when we kind of stop doing Stop doing that. You know, we usually turn it over or get a get a bad shot, and then they're able to to have transition and run on us. So you know, I thought we did a great job doing that in the second half. And uh, you know, JC had a had a great run, and uh, you know, everybody else was involved. And it's pretty tough to guard when we play that way. Sarah Todd, Deseret News. 
Rudy, to your point, you know, JC having that third quarter and then, you know, Royce on the boards, Fave on defense when he was in, how important is it? I mean, I know the team relies so much on you and Donovan, but having those guys have big plays and have their moments, how important is that during the playoffs? It's huge, you know, and that's what I've been saying for a while. Having, having David Favors coming on the bench is a luxury. And, you know, and uh, I think it makes the difference between us being a really good team, it's us being a great team, you know, because there's going to be games when, like tonight in the first half, I'm in foul trouble and uh, and Derek comes in and, you know, he's able to impact the game and, and dominate and, and really uh, kind of like anchor our defense too. So, you know, it's huge. And having guys like Joe, like Jordan, that come off the bench and, and are able to, you know, bring a spark of the bench in a lot of different ways, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, I think it's what makes us special this year. You know, we we able to play great basketball for 48 minutes, and you know, it's it's hard for teams to to keep up with the way we play for if we play the right way for 48 minutes. Kristen Kenny, Jazz TV. Rudy, you guys are up three one like last year in the bubble. Uh, we've talked a lot about how the adversity has made you guys better. Has it better prepared you to close this series out? I mean, we know it's, it's it's one game at a time, and uh, for us, it's just keep getting better. You know, we know they're, gonna, they're not going to give up. They're, they're going to come out and give everything they have. You know, they they won two of those games before the playoffs, so they they've been in those situations before. We not go home. You know, so they're going to come in and play really hard and, and try to beat us. And for us, it's it's about matching their physicality and and you know play play our, our basketball, do what we do defensively and offensively. And just, you know, keep getting better because we don't want to just be in the second round. We, we try to do something a little bigger than that. Tony Jones, The Athletic. In the previous game, 23 and 12 in this one, his name is Ja Morant. He's at John, the mic. Coach is telling us just kind of how encouraged he is by just kind of how the fight you guys have shown, especially the last two games. How do you feel just kind of where, even though the loss is there, how do you feel about just being encouraged by the team just fighting against obviously the NBA's best team by record? Oh. Uh, you know, that's a positive for us, um, you know, not to, you know, no matter what's going on in the game, shots falling, shots not falling, uh, continue to play hard and not give up. Um, we just got to, you know, find ways to close out better. Sean Coleman. Job between game three and game four, especially with the start tonight, it seems like there was a better effort for the full 48, which has, of course, been y'all's plan all along. It just seems like every game there's a level of improvement that makes y'all more and more competitive. Hopefully, it would all come together in game five for a full 48 to get the win. Um, yeah, you know, that's our goal. Um, obviously, you know, game two, game three, they got out on a hot start, uh, which put us, you know, in I think like a double digit hole. Um, I mean, eventually, you know, we, we came back, you know, tied the game up, but uh, we felt like, you know, if we just, you know, start better and, um, you know, we know that, you know, they are going to run, just, you know, try to cut it short and uh, go on the run of our own, uh, you know, we'd be in, you know, a good position. Uh, like I said before, you know, we just got to, you know, figure out how to close out the game better. Josh Robbins. Job, given that Utah has at least four high level three point shooters on the floor at all times, how much margin of error does that leave your team? Uh, against a team like that? Um, it's tough. You know, we just got to try to keep the ball in front and, you know, uh, try not to be in, you know, rotation as much as possible. Uh, you know, with them being able to, you know, shoot the ball, um, if we in, you know, in rotations, you know, they normally get good looks. So I'm um, just got to contain the ball, you know, uh, continue to just play hard, uh, keep pursuing, and you know, uh, get stops, rebound, and, you know, get out and run. Uh, they are a great team, and you know they make you pay for you know mistakes. Drew, John, uh, the Grizzlies have already won two elimination games this year. Is there anything you'll lean on from those two looking ahead to Game Five? Uh, no, I mean we've been playing the same way you know uh, all season. Just gotta you know focus in on you know the next game, uh, play hard, uh, 48 minutes, and you know just try to play our basketball. Brandon Abraham. Yeah, I kind of piggybacking off of what Evan was saying about the uh, Taylor talking about how he's encouraged um, and not frustrated. 
how big is that for such a young team, you know, going through a stretch, losing three in a row in a playoff series to always have his positive mentality? I mean, we all stay positive, you know, no matter what's going on. Um, I mean, we just can't, you know, let uh, one game carry over to the next. Uh, we can't be, you know, frustrated and go into the next game frustrated. You know, we got to have all the confidence in the world, you know, be positive. Um, I mean, we work to get here. So um, just got to, like I said, just go out and, you know, play our basketball, play hard, and just, you know, um, play full 48. Last question, Adam Tyke. Yeah, it, it seems like late game execution has been a bit of a theme over the last couple of games. We were just missing any? shots. Honestly, it's the shots we've been shooting all season. Same plays we've been running, you know, early in the game. Just missed shots late. So, um, she's going to continue to get better, uh, keep shooting with confidence, and, you know, try to close out the game. Thanks. That was the point guard. Now here is Spider Mitchell averaging 27.4 points per game in his playoff career. Smitty, that is the most in Jazz franchise history. It's not bad. Yeah, right there. And they had some pretty good players in that, that franchise. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. It's 10 career games scoring 30 or more. Now we will go to Spider Mitchell. He is attentive. Let's take a listen. Kind of, you know, hang in there and not give up. But uh, the flip side to that is. You guys seem to answer back every time. What's kind of been the key to, you know, you guys being able to respond when they start to put on the pressure? Um, it's all our mental. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, the mental aspect of it. You know, like I said, like, like you said, they're a team that's never going to quit. Up 30, down 30, it doesn't matter what quarter it is. And, you know, hats off to them for that. But the biggest thing is when you have a team that's always going to be aggressive, always trying to continue to fight, we got to be smart with the basketball. Um, too many times tonight, you know, I know we won, but too many times tonight, you get up nine, ten, we get careless. Um, I throw a cross court baseball pass, turnover, at least two or three. Um, we had another one where it was just a stupid pass. Like those are the, those are the things that we got to nip in the butt. Those are the mental stuff. And we fixed it, we executed through it, and it didn't end up hurting us. But um, if you want to be the team you want to be, that's going to be the game, you know, for, uh, throughout, the, throughout the playoffs. So um, that's really what it is for us. Um, just continue to, to be sharp mentally, uh, up 10, down 10, and go out there and do what we do. Sarah Todd, Deseret News. Don, there was that sequence in the fourth quarter when Mike came in, he stripped John Morant and then turned around and made a three on the other end. It was a huge momentum shift. He'd been kind of quiet through the night up until that point. What can you say about the way that he's sort of able to come in in those really high pressure situations, and calm things down, and be able to shift the game like that? Um, you know, just from the court, you know, on, on paper, he only had 11 points. And he had seven assists, but it felt like he was out there having 20 and 10. You know what I mean? Like just his presence, uh, the way he goes about the game. Like I said, mentally, he's seen a lot of this throughout his playoff experience. He's seen a lot of it here. Uh, so he knows the, knows the game, knows the arena. That that plays a big factor uh, for sure. And you know, his knowledge of, of the game helps. You know, understanding, studying guys in the scout report, knowing their movements, knowing when to be aggressive, when to, when to lay back. You know, I think that's that's why I always say, like, man, it's great to have Mike because, you know, he's out there helping me as well. You know, when he makes a move where he does something, I see it, you know, on film or I see it in, in live action. He's always kind of giving me little tidbits here and there. And I think that's – that's what he does for his team. Like last game, it was 20 and whatever, you know, game two, it was uh, 20 and 15. Like, you know, tonight was 11 and seven, but he had a tremendous impact. You know, he had one of the highest plus minuses in the game because he just, ex he executes on both ends of the floor. He's a leader uh, on the floor and in the locker room. David James, KTV. Donovan, uh, Dylan Brooks was trending on Twitter big time during the game. Jazz fans were going nuts. And I'm curious if as players, the stuff that's happened with him, you just view it as kind of part of the playoffs or do you feel like some lines have been crossed and it, it does fire you guys up a little bit the way it fires up fans? Um, I love him. Um, simply put, you know, I, you guys, you've seen it through my career. I, I like when people talk shit. <laughs> like it's just – part of the game. I grew up in that, you know, and that's just how I've always uh, played basketball. I think for us, it, it, it gets him going and that's his thing. That's cool. It gets us going too. So, um, but that also goes back into what I was saying to Sarah about the mental component because it can take you 
out of the game completely, you know, and I think the biggest thing is to stay sharp mentally and going out there finding ways to execute. And he wants to keep doing that, it's, it's cool. Um, I don't think we're really sweating it. The biggest thing is just got to stay locked in, continue to go, continue to do what we do and not really pay attention to all that. Sam Farnsworth, KSL TV. Hey, Donovan, uh, what, what would you, what's the feeling like tonight compared to last year or back in the bubble when you guys had that 3-1 lead against the Nuggets? Is that uh, at all comparable or have you tried to move past that already? Same situation. Um, I think the biggest thing is we didn't come in the locker room like we came in happy for the win, but we didn't really come in the locker room like, like we got one. Job's not done. Uh, it's not finished. And I think that's the message. I know that's the message, uh, one through 17 and, and coaches and everybody. Um, we have to go there and, and, and take care of home court back at, uh, back in Utah. And I think that's, that's where our head is at. You know, this is a good win. Um, there's things we could have done much better and we'll go ahead and execute that and take care of business at home. But, you know, it's, we've seen this before. We've been here before. It's just the exact moment we've played. We've played up to being this team that we've been, you know, because of that moment, I would say, you know, because that fueled a lot of this season. And we're here again, and we're going to go out there and just do what we do and not really relish on the past, although it definitely is fueling. As a teammate in the backcourt, now we go to Mike Conley. Late in the fourth quarter where you were able to get the ball away from Jaw and then come down and drill a three on the other end. Now, what were you seeing in those plays? And, and just in your mind, how huge were those to kind of, action for good well obviously um you know i think there were uh you know a good stretch of plays where um you know throughout the game you know jaw's been kind of having his way getting in the pain and um i knew at some point I'd, you know i get switched on to him or i have to you know guard him in that same area and i was able to kind of get in front and, and cut him off and um make him pick up the ball and i've always had quick hands and you know you know, an eye for when to go for the ball and when not to. And uh, was able to get my hand on the ball and go out of the way with it. And, um, you know, the threes that, that transpired are the one that happened before that and the one that after, uh, you know, just were uh, timely, just, you know, filling the game out. I knew, you know, Don had done a lot during the game and, you know, was wearing down a little bit. So I gave him a couple of possessions, couple of possessions off. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been in that position plenty where, um, I feel real comfortable with the ball in my hand later in the game, and and uh, that would just knock down a couple of good ones. Sarah Todd, Deseret News. Mike, you've seen a lot of playoff basketball in your days, and you know what it's like when a team maybe has to rely heavily on like its top two guys or its top guy. How much of a luxury is it for you to have someone like Jordan Clarkson who can come in in the third quarter and make a big difference, or Derek Favors to come off the bench, or Royce O'Neal getting rebounds? Uh, man, that's, that's why we're so, you know, so deep and um, talented just across the board with we have so many guys we trust, so many guys that we have faith in down the stretch and different points in the game. Like you said, Derek Favors has some great moments. Obviously, JC does what he does. And, you know, tonight was a, a you know, a really a good bounce, bounce back performance for him, you know, something that he's been you know kind of waiting on to, to kind of explode and then really go out, you know, have a good night like this. And, um, and, you know, not all of us can have that kind of night every night. So, you know, for me, it was a little bit more subdued and I was more, you know, facilitator for most of the most part of the game. And, um, and we're okay with that. Like, that's what, why, you know, why we're, you know, who we are and where we're at is because we're, we're just an unselfish team and there's no egos and um, we just play basketball. Sam Farnsworth, KSL TV. Hey, Mike, Memphis has been kind of a team of runs throughout this series. They've been able to, you know, erase your guys' large leads. But what's been the key in holding those off and, and specifically tonight, just being able to, like, flip the switch and, and expand your lead again so quickly? Well, I think, you know, in those stretches where they're making runs, you know, they're a very emotional team. Um, they, they, you know, get very high in those moments. And um, for us, it's kind of just trying to stay steady. Through it, through it all, trying to stay steady, trying to understand that execution and, and discipline down the stretch is what we need most. And uh, when we're able to do both of those things on both ends of the floor, I think it allows us to put stretches together where we we you know stop a, a, a 9-0 run and, and put our own 14-0 run together. 
um, allow us, you know, allowing us to get a little bit of breathing room to, to win these games on the stretch. Mike Conley and his band performing somewhere on Bill Street tonight. Shouts out to Mike Conley right at home. Looking at the schedule for the remainder of this series, Wednesday night, that's game five right here on NBA TV, 9.30 p.m. Z, coming to you first, potential closeout game. How do you expect this young Grizzlies team to respond going back to Utah? I, I think they'll come out with a lot of fight. Uh, I think they'll execute better. However, I, I think Utah may just be a little bit too much for them at home. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if they came out and, and snuck out a win there. But I'm picking Utah to win it. But I, I never would cut out the Grizzlies, uh, considering the way, uh, you know, uh, Ja is playing right now. Last time we saw Ja out there, well, one of the last times we saw Ja, he had that 47-point game. And, and Smitty, what we say, they, they said he can't shoot, but he yeah. still drops 47. <laughs> what do you expect to happen in this potential closeout game back in Utah? Well, I think the, the Memphis – uh, Grizzlies will compete. That's what they've been doing. They've shown that they got the respect of the Utah Jazz. They have to execute down the stretch if they can get there and have the game close. And then I think for them is they got to have one of those outliers, somebody else to come out and have one of those games where they hit five or six threes, where there's Grayson Allen, you know, DeAnthony Melton who played well, or Bain. But I think also the key right now for them is Jaron Jackson starting to get his rhythm and his approach to the game was much better than the last two. He's starting to get his balance, starting to get his confidence back. If he can have one of those games where he control on both ends of the floor, uh, they will have a chance. But the favorites will be the Utah Jazz closing them out in Salt Lake City. Favorites for the obvious reasons you mentioned. Jaron Jackson Jr., 21 points tonight in 26 minutes, really starting to find himself on that floor. The Grizzlies fans hope that they can extend the series. Jazz fans want to keep it moving. Well, we're going to keep it moving. We appreciate you for watching. That man right there, that's Steve Smith. You see Isaiah Thomas. That is.